guys were going to get wild and free just like the sea with this one. I'm starting off with the sand on the ocean floor and I combined a khaki color by Apple Barrel with some white for the base coat of our sand. Of course you could just stop right here and not do anything more to the sand. I decided to add a little bit of texturing to give it a more of a sand look. Um, not really necessary because a lot of that sand is going to be covered up by some of our sea life down there with the coral and the sea urchins and the sand dollars, but I didn't know where exactly it would be covered and I did want to add a little bit more texture to the sand. So I did that by taking a barely damp sea sponge and I took out some of the acrylic paint from some Poscas, a gray, a bronze color, uh, a beige, and just the slightest amount of black. And I really want that sea sponge to just be barely, barely damp. I showed you on the upper part of that Santorini that it's just putting out just a little bit of moisture, not a lot. And we're just going to randomly dip into those colors that I just mentioned and just blend it in there. It can be a little bit sloppy because right above that sand we're going to have the water meeting the ocean floor of sand. And um, that's really all we're doing. We're just dotting on that color, blending it. I'm, I'm getting it to where I want. I didn't want too much of the gray. Getting a little bit more of that bronze in there. And then I'll do some micro dotting just to show the dimension of the sand a little bit and blend a little bit more with that sea sponge over the micro dotting. So here I'm just adding in a little bit of our original base color of the khaki mix with the white and adding a little bit more white into it just to get some light spots in the sand. And then I'm going to re-blend it with the sea sponge. It nice and smoothed out, but enough texture remaining. This is where I'm doing that micro dotting. I just penciled in a few lines where I wanted the sand to slope a little bit and did a little bit of random micro dotting on the top. Not in a straight line, just kind of zigzagged in a line. And then I smudged it out a little bit with the uh, sea sponge again. Now we're going in with two colors for our water and I just want a variation of those tones together. Just mixed, as I said, just two colors. I mixed a white and then a color by Arteza that's called Olympic Blue. And this is at the lightest stage. Placing that down, then I'll get some darker in there. And just keep blending it until you get the look of the water that you want. There's really um, no hard, fast rules about this. Just get it in there the way you like it. I'm using a, a flat brush to apply it, nicely dampened by the water, and just continuing to blend, blend, blend. If it seems a little too white, add a little bit of the darker. And I just go back and forth between the mixtures. I'll mix a little bit with more blue than white. And then there's that other side that has a little bit more of the white than the blue. And you just get them layered and blended as you go. The difficult part on this stage is knowing when to stop <laughs> so that you keep the, the variations in the water. 
the coloring of the water. If you work it for too long, you're going to end up with the same color all the way through. So that's why I say the, the hard part is knowing when to quit. I struggle with that one. <laughs> the nice thing is though, with acrylic paints is they dry fairly quickly, especially with the help of a blow dryer. So if you do over blend and you need to get some differentiation of the shades back in there, you can always layer back on top of it. As we're getting higher on the rock, closer to the water surface, I wanted it a little light and then a little bit of dark, but you're going to see those, those differences like when either you're snorkeling or see pictures of it, you see different shades at the different depths of water. Once I get the general placement of the colors, whichever shades I, I want wherever, and I need to blend it a little bit more, I let the water and the brush really do the smoothing out for me and just go very, very light touch across where the colors meet up to each other just to blend it out a little bit more. You'll see that in just a second. Deepening that up a little bit. I had to wait for some layers to dry a little before applying that. And now just with a wet brush, gently smoothing it over so that we don't see any of the, the seams or the brush strokes as the colors are being joined with one another. Very smooth, very gentle touch. The longer your stroke, the less brush strokes you'll see and the more it will blend as opposed to short little staccato strokes. Just adding a little bit of white for dimension and then we'll blend that in. The movement of the water has little lighter spots, so I'm trying to echo that feel. Long, smooth, soft strokes. But not too many, because then your, your differentiations will disappear on you. As the paint dries, it'll deepen, get darker. So if you want to let it dry so you have a better idea of how it's going to look, let it dry, shoot it with a blow dryer real quick, and then go back in and make any corrections you may see that you need. Okay, now we're going to start on our first feature of the coral. And I'm going to pencil in over a completely dried surface just kind of free formy shapes of the coral. If you're from Arizona like I am, they kind of look like messy saguaro cactuses. Put little arms out here and there, wherever you want them. Take time to get the shape that you'd like with the pencil. And then we can go in with the color once we have a general feel. I want some shorter ones off to the side some longer ones going up to the top because we're going to be framing in some wording wild and free just like the sea up at the top there so i'm kind of allowing the coral to create my frame for that while leaving enough room in the center on that sand surface for the sand dollars and the sea urchins 
Now for the color of the coral, I'm doing a bit of a diluted acrylic application like I've done on some of my previous tutorials. And I will be using a few different shades of red and orange. I did dot out all those few shades of red and I added in a fuchsia as well, but I ended up using primarily the orange and the fluorescent red. Those two colors seem to go on the coral and look, look the most vibrant for me. So those other colors are fine to tap out. You're not really using a lot from the paint pen, as you can see. But really, I, I seem to have dipped back into those two first and foremost, the fluorescent red and the orange. If you don't have fluorescent red, that fuchsia is awfully close to it. So you can use that. But, you know, coral can be in many, many different colors. So choose whatever you'd like. And you don't have to use Poscas. You can use whatever acrylic paints you have or whatever acrylic paint pens that you have. I just happen to prefer Posca. I like the high pigment and I like the flow. So again, diluting it with a well-saturated brush and barely touching that saturated brush to the paint. And then just using the brush to let it flow within your pencil lines. And don't worry about those pencil lines. We will be doing micro dotting around the coral to give it depth, to give it some shadowing, and to give it a little subtle outline. Not as harsh as a full dark line outline, the micro dotting will give it a softer border and it will cover up any pencil that we don't cover up with our color. If it's a little thin in some areas, because sometimes that will happen when you're using this diluted acrylic application, just let it dry and layer back over it. I like doing this effect of the diluted acrylic on the coral because it, it shows how coral is in nature. There are variations in the color. They're very subtle. They just blend right into each other and it gives the coral a little bit more depth. As opposed to one color which also looks pretty. So, you know, whatever you're comfortable with, this was just the, the fun application I chose to use on this. And if you do let it dry in between, you may think that some of the areas are too light or thin with the paint if you had, you know, more water in, in certain strokes than you did in others. Let it dry because as I said the the paint will dry darker and you may find that it doesn't need to be touched up with another layer or you may find that it will. If you see too much of the background coming up through the coral then add another layer of color but it, it's something you're just going to have to play with and see how you like it. Let it dry in between. If you're impatient like me, shoot it with that blow dryer and it won't, it won't slow you down. If you find that um, your like one color is taking over the other color too much because that will happen when you keep a well-saturated brush for this diluted acrylic application. If you bring the second color down too close to the other color that is still wet with that high amount of water, it can just bleed right in and take over. The best way to prevent that from happening is to not 
bring your next color mixed with water down right on top of or close to the next color. Just give you yourself a little bit of space in between the two. They'll blend together, but the second color application won't completely take over the first. Because you want to blend, but you want to keep that differentiation. If you find it, it's just taking it over, you're a little too close to it. So just back off just a tiny, tiny amount, and it will end up running together. You can always daub it a little bit with some water to help it along the way, but you do want to keep the separate colors just a little tiny bit. And I'm using a very uh, small brush to get into those lines. If you get a little sloppy on it and go outside of the pencil line, it's really not a problem because that micro dotting will cover that up. If it's too much outside of the line because it's highly diluted, you can just take a Q-tip and lay it right on that water and it'll soak it all up and you won't even notice that it was there. very handy to always keep some q-tips on hand you can see a little one little bit of one peeking out I always have at least one right there and um, great for quick fixes the pointed ones are especially helpful for me see I brought that neon color pretty close to it but not right on top of it then it needed a little bit of help so I just dragged it right into it and that kept the two colors distinct, but still blended. Starting at the higher point, so I'm not letting that second color take over, and just kind of barely pulling it up to the color that was already down. I'm really not having to add a lot of paint into this. A little bit goes a very long way. Obviously made had to make sure that my right side of coral was completely dry before coming in with this left side so that I didn't pick it all up on my hand. <laughs> I use the rock to steady my hand while I'm painting. I'm sure most of you probably do the same thing. Not so unique. Gently moving that watery acrylic around. And that's just with one dip that I haven't even dipped into another color yet right there. It's, see how, how long a little bit will go. Now we're just putting in a little bit of that neon and I'm not right on top of that first paint, just guided it in after I had already applied it so it wouldn't take over. So I was able to just layer right on top of that little bit more watery area after it dried for a little bit. It doesn't seem like there was enough time for it to dry, but this video is on a higher speed, so it did give it a little bit of a chance to dry up so that I could do a layer on top. So 
we'll have a few different techniques going on here, but all done with acrylic. This rock doesn't have mixed media. It's all acrylic. With, of course, some accents of, of a gel pen. I started off with the Thule art for the micro dotting, which is what I do usually use for my micro dotting, but I've used them so much they started to give out on me in the middle of doing this rock. So I switched over to a black uh, Signa UM153, and that worked just fine. Just adding another layer. After it was dry, it seemed a little transparent for me, so I just added a little bit more to it. Q-tip time. Soak that right up. little touch-ups here and there and then we're moving on to the micro dotting on it I didn't do all of the micro dotting on camera so once you see a little bit of it you'll know exactly what to do on the rest of it and that's a little bit boring to watch anyway so I started out with this Thule art in a number 10 and you just do random dotting, not necessarily in a straight line, a little bit going over to the outside of the line of the coral, a little bit to the inside of the coral. And then after I have my outlining, at each of the bends and curves and at the tops of any of the points of the coral, I went a little heavier with those black dots to give it dimension and some shadowing. So a little heavier up at that top there. Bring it into the coral in some areas. And keep it random. So in a teeny tiny kind of zigzag movement with your hand, just go back and forth with your dotting. Don't try to keep a straight line too much. A little bit heavier on the dotting in those little divots and curves of the coral, a little bit in the center. And you can kind of let the way the diluted acrylic dried give you kind of a guide as to where you want to do micro dotting within the piece of coral. Like if there are a few darker areas where the dilution dried dark, use that as the area where you're going to put a little bit more micro dotting and it will give some dimension and texture to your coral. A little bit darker at the tips, meaning when I say darker, more of those micro dots to darken it up a little bit darkened at the V and some areas of your dotting line not the whole thing but some parts of it just choose some parts that will have a little bit of a darker more saturated micro dot area 
and that's going to help you with that dimension as well. So I'm going over that little U area a little bit heavier. I finished that micro dotting off camera of the coral. Now I'm just penciling in a light little area of where I'm going to want the sand dollars to be. So we did this in layers. We did the sand, the ocean floor, the water, the coral next, now the sand dollars, and then we'll do the sea urchins on top of all that. That way we can have them all layered in. Penciling in where I want those sand dollars. Some of them will peek out from the sand because they like to burrow when they're alive. Sand dollars are a type of sea urchin. So when they're in the water and they're alive, they do tend to burrow in, standing up into the sand. So I wanted some of them to look as though they were standing up in that ocean floor. And they tend to be in groupings. Now I tapped out some Posca. It's a coral color. Ironic that I didn't use the coral color on the coral, but I liked it on the sand dollar for our base color. And I did a couple coats of this because it was a little transparent. Just filling in each of those overlapping circles. And I'm using a small, flat, angled brush for these babies. And once again, we will be doing micro dotting around these sand dollars. So if you go a little bit out of your pencil line, no worries. If you still see the pencil line, after you have your paint applied, no worries again. It will all go away with our micro dot outlining. Speeding up that drying process with my blow dryer. Second layer coming in. And I'm just going for enough of the layering of the color so that you don't see the sand or the water peeking through. But I do want this color to remain pretty subtle. The other detail on the sand dollar we will be doing with a Posca pink that I mixed a little bit with the coral because I didn't want it as bright pink as it comes out of the Posca itself. And we'll also be using a light pink for the center dot on the sand dollar. Sand dollars. We've got eight of them there. Okay, now we're doing that mixture that I mentioned. A little bit of more of the coral. And after this is dry, I'm going to add in some of that brighter pink that you see on the left side of my work board. Work surface. One more little layer on areas that I see the sand and the water peeking through. And definitely make sure that your layers are fully dry, at least for the most part, before you add your next one. Otherwise, you'll pull that color right up from the previous coat.
There we go. That's the depth of color I was looking for. I think that was the third, third coat, maybe. Usually two or three does the trick. It really depends on the color. You know, some of the colors are a little bit more translucent than others. Yellows tend to be more translucent. Whites certainly are more translucent. I might not have had to use as many coats of that coral if I had put down a white first. I did forget that. And that would have helped you. Okay, right now what I'm doing with the sand dollars is I'm creating, there in sand dollars there's like little V shapes that, um, that cut into the circle. So they're not perfect circles. They have little, little divots in them, usually about three or four. So first I'm doing that with the pencil and then that will dictate where my micro dotting right on top of the pencil will go. And they're just little tiny V's, little tiny V's. And then I fill them in and move them out to the rest of the line of the circle. That's giving us more of a sand dollar shape as opposed to just a plain old circle. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, now we're doing the rest of the, the color and design on the sand dollar. The lighter pink is for the center dot, as I said, just barely touching it to the centers. And now I'm taking that coral, as I said, the other pink, and I'm going to mix them together just to get a deeper shade And I'm using that blend with a very fine line brush. Not as fine as a disposable eyeliner, but close. And you could certainly use a disposable eyeliner brush. And I'm just creating almost, it's like a flower. It looks like a flower on top of the sand dollar. That's the beautiful natural design of a sand dollar. So like little petals. And it's usually in fives. So five of those going around that lighter pink dot center and then each of those shapes the circle and the petals will all be micro dotted outlined very 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 lightly just so they pop out off of the background of the color coral color And I'm letting th this shape of that brush really dictate how the shape of those quote unquote petals are going to go down. If you have the right kind of brush, just a single stroke will create that for you. You don't want those petals touching like in a flower. They're spaced out much wider on the sand dollar. And then coming back in with a little bit of micro dotting with that tule art until it gives out on me in just a little bit. I'm trying to scribble it off and dip it in water and reactivate it, but it was just giving me a really hard time. I eventually got frustrated enough that I switched over to that Signa gel pen. But I wanted those micro dots to be pretty subtle anyway, so it worked all right, but the gel pen for the rest of it worked much better. Sand dollars also have little holes, like just a few of them around close, in between the petals, quote unquote. So I did that with the, the Tule Art pen as well, just 
little oblong holes and now I'm micro dotting my outline so as you see it's just making it pop that much more and you're covering up those penciled in V's that you put down earlier and it will give all of those sand dollars the dimension we want them to have. I did the rest of that micro dotting off camera because it's exactly like the micro dotting that we did on the coral. Now I'm penciling in larger circles overlapping each other for our sea urchins. And I chose to do five sea urchins. I'm overlapping them on top of the sand dollars a little bit, on top of a little bit of the coral, because I do want that layered effect of all of the components. And I did groupings of colors for these, sand, or for these sea urchins. I did two shades of purple, a very light lavender, and a deep plum. And that's what I'm going to be putting down first. And this is going to be a almost a, um, a double load on your brush for these colors because we want there to be, I don't know, almost a tie-dye look to the sea urchins. That's what I see when I look at them in their finished state. But just the variation of colors come out much better when we do a double load. I started by just pulling out from the centers of the circles with the lighter shade. Put that down first. And then without cleaning my brush out, I dipped into the plum. So then I have the combination on my brush of the wet, light, light purple along with the wet plum. I'm going in between what I already put down for the lavender with, uh, with the lavender. And then I'm just going to pull the two of them together, the two wet paints together, so we have a, a more blended look of the two. And I'm applying the paint in that kind of starburst formation in each of the circles. If you find that you go over it too many times, just like with the water before, if it blends too much, bring in a little bit more of that dark after it's dried, just a little bit, not fully dried. You still want it a little wet because you want it to blend. But um, I moved on to the next one so that I can come back and layer with another bit of darker on that first one. Same application here, pulling the darker purple through and into the lavender, but still leaving the lavender showing. And that's being achieved by not cleaning out that brush in between going back and forth between the two colors. I'm just loading it up with both colors. And I'm not really paying attention to filling in every single spot of the circle. I want the majority of it filled in, but I'm not like doing a, a sharp fill in line of the circle. I'm leaving it rather loose because the micro dotting that I will be coming back in with is going to give us more of the, the rounded shape we're looking for instead of just a single dimensional circle we want those sea urchins to look like they're a little bit more dimensional. Now I'm doing two of the sea urchins with some different blue shades. Whichever three you want, but you definitely want a dark, a medium, and a light or just a dark and a light, whichever you prefer.
and the same technique of loading with both of the colors and layering and pulling them all together but leaving differentiation like a tie-dye so that beneath our white dots which we'll be putting on after this you're going to see each of the colors showing through. They almost look like sloppy little flowers at this point, but that will change. I felt like I needed a little bit more light in there, so I pulled in yet a lighter shade of blue. This is a really fun thing to paint when you're just wanting to play with color. Be wild and free, just like the quote that we used on this rock. You can be wild and free with these colors. All right, now for that last sea urchin, I'm going to use some shades of green. A light one and a dark one. Same thing, blending them in but leaving those colors popping out as their own shade and maybe creating a couple different shades along the way as they blend. Now there's that gel pen that I'm going to do the micro dotting around the edges only of the sea urchin, not within the, the circle itself, just the edges. Zigzag pattern with your hand, just slight zigzag so that it's not too much of a straight line, but enough of a line that you're giving the outline effect. But I do want the dimension of these sea urchins to come out a little bit more with the micro dotting. Some shading on the area that it's going to be at the bottom or at, you know, at the top. The sea urchins, you'll see in just a minute, we're going to offset the center dot on them which is also going to give that effect of them kind of pointing in different directions. Okay, so there on my original sketch of what I was going to do, I'm showing where the black dots are going to go. I did not put them in the center of each circle. And that first application of the black Posca with a dot is just to give me a guide of where I'm going to be doing my walking dots with the white. I'm starting with a larger stylus dotting tool and doing a few rows of the larger dots. And then the flip side of that stylus has the smaller point. And I'm going to come back in with walking dots that are smaller. Again, we're coming out from that black dot, which is offset in each of the circles, each of the sea urchins. Once my white dots are dry, I'm going to make those black dots just a slight bit larger so they're not covered up by the white dots. And then after that larger black dot is applied and everything was dry. 
I did a quick shot of my Rust-Oleum Clear Sealer. Oh, I did my lettering first, sorry, with my white gel. Then a quick shot of my Rust-Oleum Sealer and then my Sargent's Glitter Glaze on the top, any glitter you want, and then a coat of UV Resin, and we're good to go.